word think position. It means, what are you known for in the minds of other people? If I say to you, running shoe, which company are you probably likely to think of first? <laughs> right, and everyone said the same. Because that's what they're known for. Which means when you've got a problem that means you need a solution called running shoe, you immediately think of that brand. The trust is already built, you'll pay a premium price to buy their products. Here's a question for you. If somebody in the world right now has the exact problem that you now solve, so let's say you work inside a company as an executive, and there's problems that people have in that company that you now solve, is that person thinking of you as the core person to go to to help them solve that problem? If not, then they're going to somebody else, or the problem's not getting solved at all. In a business, if you have a solution to problems, at the moment a client has the exact problem in business you know to solve, are they thinking of you? If right now the answer to that is no, then you're in that business of not having to be lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time with the right person. So how do we do it? How do we position ourselves? Let's first look at why we want to do this. All right, let's take a look. And I put this into uh, English pounds just for argument's sake to hear, because this is where this research is based on. So you can times five these numbers. When you start out in a career, in a business, or in a company you work for, you're completely unknown by most people. At unknown levels, your income's going to be between zero and 25,000 pounds. So between zero and, say, 125,000 euros. Then, when you start being known as somewhat a specialist, <coughs> then your income's going to rise. When people start to know about you a bit, you're quite good at something, then you expect your income to probably double at this point. 25 to 50,000 pounds, something like 125,000 up to 250,000 euros. The next level up is called the level of being an authority. This is where you all need to be aiming at the very minimum. So that you are positioned as, and known as, an authority. And your income will be between 50,000 and 1 million pounds. Between around 250,000 uh, dirhams and 5 million dirhams would be your income at that level. Now, there's no surprise that the word authority, the first six letters spell the word author. And there is a reason for that. Now, of course, this immediately makes you think you need to write a book. That is not the case. Now, you could write a book, that would help, but it is not, not today, it is not a primary like it used to be ago. And I'm going to show you today what it is you need to create that will ultimately make you an authority. We're going to look at that throughout the day. But even that has two other levels of art. The next level is called micro-celebrity. You might hear the word influencer. But in essence, what it means is that this person is an authority, but in addition to that, they've also become now celebrated. So they have face recognition, name recognition. People, when they get close to you, if they're know about you, want photographs with you. It doesn't mean you're famous now for probably 50 million people. You're probably famous for around 50,000 people. And those 50,000 people are your subscribers. Those 50,000 people are on your YouTube channel. These are people who know about you because you're a celebrity in your industry, in your niche. But you're not a celebrity everywhere. That income is going to jump between 1 and 10 million, so between 5 and 50 million dollars. And then the top is celebrity itself, where now you're not known just in your industry, you're now known by everybody in the world. And your income there is above 10 million, so above 50 million dollars. A good example of that would be Tony Robbins. If you remember, when Tony started out, he was unknown, same as everybody. Then they become a specialist. 
this in a technology called NLP, I'm sure you've heard of this, Neuro Frequency Programming. And the income rose as he started to help people using that technology. Now, he was not the creator of that technology, he was just an early adopter of that technology. But he would have stagnated to that level because he couldn't become an authority in NLP because he was not the creator of it. Somebody else was. So what Tony did was he authored his own version of NLP, which he changed the name called NAC, Neuro Associative Conditioning, because he adapted it and changed it and made it his own. Does that make sense? Or is that what you're with me so far and follow what I'm saying? Okay. And then, of course, he authored books, Unlimited Power, and was also Away from the Giant Within. And he wrote, and he obviously authored also an audio program called Personal Power. Then Tony became a micro celebrity as a result of that. He was very much known in the personal development field. But today, Tony is a celebrity in his own right. The majority of people could probably have heard of him, even if they're not that interested in personal development. So, how is this working for you? So, there are three things today, just three, that we're going to look at. And we're going to look at just one of those in much greater detail. Because in order to learn to do this, and to more importantly implement it, we need a bit longer to work together to do so. But there's a lot of time today to get in. We've got a lot of stuff we can learn today. So do you have the ability to make notes? Yes. Yes. Please do make notes, okay? Yes. If you want to take photographs of these slides, I'm also good with that as well. Take this content as your own. Use it, okay? All right, so three things we're gonna focus on. The first of these is awareness. You've got to ultimately be known. Somebody out there needs to be aware that you exist. And you've got to start positioning yourself in their mind as a specialist, as an expert, as an authority in their mind. Yes or no guys? Yes. So how do you do it? Well, there's only one way primarily to do it today. And here is the word. Who has heard of this before? So it's the word content, please. Raise your hands. Now here's the point. Are we living in a world today where you are consuming on a regular basis quite a lot of content? That was not rhetorical. That was a question that was open to you. This was the interactive part of the speech, so to let you know, okay? Look, I get it, I understand. Nobody is going to want to be the only idiot calling out by themselves, I get that. But look, do you think the speaker up there might need some engagement? Yes. yes. Otherwise, the speaker up there has no clue if anything he's sharing up there are being understood by you, grasped by you, so you can use them. I'd like to adapt this content phase. If you don't get a point, then what I'm going to do is reteach it until you get it. So every now and again, I'm going to check in if you understand it. Look, if we were speaking one, if I was speaking one on one with you, I wouldn't talk at you for an hour or so without checking your understanding. That would be really stupid, wouldn't it? Yes. Yes or no, guys? Yes. yes. Right. So, content. Today, have you consumed content even today? Yes or no, guys? Yes. yes. How much have you created today? Zero. <laughs> uh -huh. Because when it comes to content, you're either on the creation side or you're on the consumption side. If you're consuming content, you're spending time and probably money at some point by being sold to. Mm -hmm. If you're creating content, you're saving time because you create it once, it works for you for a longer time. And you're probably selling yourself or something inside that content, aren't you? Yes or no, guys? Yes. So here's the question, are you creating more than you're consuming? No. Then you must change that diet. Now that will scare you a little bit, potentially, because it sounds like hard work. Like, Andy, I'm busy. How can I possibly create all this content? Aha. Well, I'm going to show you today that there's a very easy and simple way for you to create content that requires pretty much no additional work at all. Would that be useful? Yes, okay. yeah. Now, here's the point. Here's what people think content is. People think what content is is having a camera on, standing in front of a flip chart, and writing and educating like this. 
That's what we think content is. And of course, there is one form of creating content. But there are many other forms of creating content. Now, let me ask you this. Have there been times, are there still times today in your career where your inflow, in your zone, very good at what you do, in the flow of doing what you're good at doing? Yes or no, guys? Yes. Does that happen? Yes or no? Come on, we're good. Come on. Yes. Look, I get it. Nobody wants to be an idiot for me. I understand. I get it. But that you came here to stand out. So why are you trying so hard your whole life to fit in? When you and I both know you've been born to stand out. There's nobody like you. You're special, unique. You've got a special message. A unique message. A unique opportunity to serve and make a difference and help people. But if you constantly keep on muting yourself and waiting for the perfect moment to speak up and to speak out, you'll be waiting a very long time. You learn to walk before you're ready. You learn to talk a complex language before you're ready. And you'll learn to create content and express your views before you're ready. So you must start before you're ready. Write this down. Write down, I must start before I'm ready. That's how I get ready. So don't wait for some preordained perfect moment you say, I'm ready now. Because you won't. So, how do we create content? Ask again. Have there been times, are there times now, where you're in flow, doing your work, stuff you're good at, stuff you enjoy, stuff you're passionate about, meetings you have with people, a perfect uh, piece of uh, advice you gave a client, for example, right? Does that happen on a regular basis? Yes or no, guys? Yes. Great dance. Have the camera on all the time. Your camera on your phone needs to be on all the time. When I say all the time, I mean at times where there's a possibility that good ideas and thoughts could be captured as they happen. There are certain days where you've got lots of meetings. Have the camera on. Now, I know what you're thinking, but what if my client doesn't want to be filmed? That's fine, the camera can just be on you. And everything related to what they say is edited out. And it's just your answers that the audience get to hear. Because those are the important ones that they need to hear, isn't it? Yes or no, guys? Yes. Raise your hand if you understand. So here's how we build content. We build awareness by building our audience. You've got to build out an audience. Now that audience isn't an audience necessarily that's physical like today. It will be ultimately. But your first level audience is an audience that's built up through your YouTube channel, your Instagram people, your Facebook people, your LinkedIn people. Does that make sense? Yes or no, guys? Yes. What's going to make them become an audience? What does an audience always need? Content. Something. Content, right? And your content needs to be three things. Here's three things. They all fit in with you. Your content can and perhaps should be, firstly, education. And remember, education does not have to come in the form of standing in front of a flip chart educating. We learn all the time just by eavesdropping in on conversations that happen on a regular basis. So what that means is, your content doesn't necessarily have to be you teaching it in a standard teaching format. It could be you just having a chat to somebody, but the camera's on at the same time. The second form of our content can be entertainment. So what that means is, we want to put content together that doesn't just educate, it also entertains. Now, traditionally, back a few years ago, all forms, most forms of TV was all entertainment content. But today it's much more education as well. Documentaries, real life stories, etc. Because we've switched around from light entertainment, we used to like years ago with sitcoms and things like that. You know, watching the Friends, you know, show. And now we actually want to stuff that teaches us stuff because we're in a different modality as a human race now. The last one we want to make is emotion. Educational content, entertaining content, emotional content. And this does not have to 
they reserved just for entrepreneurs or people that are business owners. You could be an employee. <coughs> While you're in the middle of your job, have the stuff on, build your own internal audience of people, because then the rest of the company can see all your stuff and realize how good you are at your job. You're an automatic choice promotion, aren't you? Yes, I know, guys. And now you start being seen internationally, that company, because it's got, you know, uh, uh, headquarters in other places in the world. Now, your, your CV is dead. The CV, I don't look at your CV now. If I want to hire you, I'm going to go straight to your YouTube and your other channels and go, what's this person really like? And you're going to turn it sharp on your channel, isn't it? Yes, no, guys? Yes. Now think about it. Go back a few years ago. What dominated? If you want to be seen and known as an authority, why have you do it? You did newspapers, radio, television. Now newspapers are replaced by social media. Radio is replaced by podcasts. TV is replaced by YouTube. So what are you doing on social media? Where's your podcasts? Where are your YouTube channels? Right now, <coughs> pretty bad posting. Why? Because you're worried about you haven't got enough content. You have enough content. So let me give you an example of the sort of content that I create that you can mirror and do exactly the same thing. So there are days where I do not produce content because I'm with my family doing stuff that isn't really the sort of content I want to capture. Mm -hmm. But there will be days where I've got meetings, where I'm doing stuff, speaking, etc., and content can be captured in those moments. That is why there's a camera guy, uh, Raph, right there, following me around. Want. Now, in the beginning, you'll have to hold it yourself. Does that make sense? But then as it starts to build, you'll have enough money to buy to get somebody to help you out. Your first hire today is always a peer. Right? A you know, personal assistant. Take all the horrible work away from you. Your second hire used to be a salesperson. Your second hire today is not a salesperson. Your second hire today is a camera. Because I'll make more sales through the content created there than somebody picking up the phone and trying to call someone that sells them. Does that make sense? Raise any other sense, please. So here's a quick, short version. We put together a six, seven minute version of a piece of content for you to watch. Um, the reality is on my YouTube channel, it's going to go for about 20 or so minutes. But I should have it down for you guys just here so it's a bit more watchable just for our purpose today. This is a perfect example of just capturing stuff as it happens. Okay? So this is micro content that gives us what we call awareness. Okay? So the big bit of content in the watch now goes for seven minutes, six, seven minutes. But then what we do is we take little clips of that content and break it onto one minute Instagram videos. The idea I know is to give people a little bit of a snippet of it, and then the end of the call to action is to go to the main YouTube channel and subscribe. Does that make sense? Raise it in the bottom. Because if you've got lots of people subscribing on YouTube or your other channels, you're building the audience. <coughs> Then in a little while, I'm going to show you what to do with that audience, okay? Okay, we can go, let's go, let's go. Whoa! 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 Hey, Emmy Harrison here, and I am in India, in New Delhi. I'm speaking at a big conference today at the Indira Gandhi Stadium. We have cash. I think we go over here. Huh? <laughs> it's air conditioned in here. Today we are we're heading to a hotel now just to get changed. And then we're off to the Indira Gandhi Stadium.
No, thank you. No, no, thank you very much. I'm sure. Thank you very much. I have a camera here. I have a camera. I have a camera. I have a camera. His camera is better than your camera. Look. Oh, they look good. Where's the mirror? So this is a form of selling that people get irritated by um, when you go to events, as in, like it's all sell, right? There's no value, there's no relationship built in advance, they're on you straight away. And here's the point, because nobody, nobody actually uh, likes being sold to, everyone likes buying. So, you know, let's think, let's have a look through the different approaches that people are using here. Goodbye, gentlemen. Thank you. All right, so we're here at the Indira Gandhi Stadium, and we are presenting right here today. Hopefully, we can create a feeling of intimacy uh, in that room. So everyone was totally connected to me and to each other. Uh, I've only got 30 minutes to put off. I'm sure I can do it. Okay.
to go back to family, to have some family time. So, yeah, it's, it's tough, but it's good work, you know, it's, it's fun, it's enjoyable, it's free. Um, so if you like the sound of this kind of lifestyle, then it might be for you. But the other no illusions, it is work. There's no, there's no magic button here, you know, it's, it's hard work. It's a, it's a long haul. And you've got to be in the long term. You don't love the work, um, don't do it. You know, if you don't like the time, go find that mountain. Go find the mountain. Let's give a big hand to Rack. Thank you, everyone.